Are you selling things online? I love selling things online. And the best thing to do if you're selling things online is to run meta catalog ads. And today, we're gonna go over that and how to do it in 2025. Catalog, what do you mean? Like these old things? <laughs> no dummy, they're online, they're on Facebook. So your store, it has products. You gotta get those products into Meta. Where do they go once you wanna get them into Meta? Commerce Manager, right here. You can find it in the menu. They've put it at the bottom now. It used to be at the top, but you can find it here. You go to Commerce Manager. And then what we wanna do is we wanna create a new catalog. So we're gonna click plus. What the fuck is this? We're gonna hit the plus right there. It's gonna tell me that I have too many catalogs. Weird new thing they've added. All right, then we're gonna get here. If you're selling things online, I love to do. It's going to be online products. You're selling things online. We love it. Uh, but if you're doing other things like local products, or you have local inventory attached to every product that's different, travel, real estate, auto, um, you're going to select that here. These are important. Make sure you select the right one. But for most people, it's going to be selling things online. Um, then we're going to, you're going to have the option to connect to a partner platform. Uh, I don't think you should do that because when you connect to a platform like Shopify or BigCommerce or whatever, it's sending all this information through the API. The API is kind of a black box. If you need to change something or add extra info, you don't have as much control. When you're sending from a CSV, if we don't check this, then it'll allow us to send uh, from a CSV or XML. That's a lot better uh, because we are able to control um, what, what fields and what information comes in about our products, which is way better. Next. Then it wants us to connect to tracking, and I'm gonna blur all this out, but you just need to pick your pixel because the pixel is going to communicate with what people are buying in your store with this catalog so that Meta has a full on, um, it has a sense for who's buying what, what and looking at what. Then uh, it's gonna tell us to upload products. We're gonna to connect to a feed, like I just said. I wish my catalog was online and not in some stupid paper book. Hey kid, you gotta get yourself one of those feeds. How do you get a feed? Well, you can get one from MarPipe. You can export a CSV from MarPipe, or you know, there's other different, let's put some other people who do that. There's other, uh, other vendors, you could say. Then we're gonna go here. It's gonna prompt us to paste in our, our feed URL. So feed is just a URL with a file at the, at the end of it. Then we're gonna take a look at this. Okay, new data feed, currency dollars. Yeah, sync every hour. I'm actually gonna say sync every three hours. So we don't need it to sync every hour. It could just slow things down. It's gonna load. It's gonna say, oh, upload products, fix issue. I just saw this before and it's not actually an issue. It's uploading right here. They trick you. <laughs> so don't pay attention to that thing that said it didn't work. Uh, just go here and look at the feed uploading progress. And while that's happening, I'm just going to turn myself off. Oh look, it's done. Okay, so now our data source is uploaded. There's no problems. Everything, it says all good. It says we got 1.1K products in there. Sounds good to me. Uh, you know what we can see that? We can go to items now. We can go see, oh, here's all my items inside of Meta. Inside here, we've taken things from the store and we've put them in Meta, and now it knows all the IDs and all the information about the products that we've given it. Uh, so we can click on these, we can look at all their info, um, and now this is like this is what Meta can use to then advertise. They can use all these products and build ads automatically, dynamically. Uh, and they can target these these products based on this information. You know, they can use say like, oh, crossbody. Somebody was searching a crossbody. Maybe we'll serve them an ad for a crossbody. You know, now we're thinking, but. You know, what if we want to group these products into different groups and advertise them as groups instead of just letting Meta decide whatever, whichever products they want to use? That is when, what we need product sets for. So we're going to click sets. We're going to go down here. And you see that one set is already there, all products. That's a set. And that's going to be the default set when you make a new ad. Uh, but we can make a new one. Let's go to create set. And we're going to say use filters. You could manually select items, yes. But if you have, you know, more than a few, that's not going to be fun. So we're gonna click use filters, and then I'll give this a name. Uh, we want this to be crossbody bags. So let's just say, you know, for my example, we want to make uh, a product set for just crossbody bags. What we can do is we can say, okay, which thing are we gonna, we're gonna use the title. We're gonna say title contains crossbody because that's how, kind of our, our naming convention. We want the title to say crossbody, and it's gonna be right there. So you have to click it. You can't just hit enter. It's kind of 
But then we see that there's 118 items and 587 variants for that. We can hit create, and then we'll have this product set. Um, and you'll see that these are split up here, and then it even has this button over here to say advertise set. That's kind of getting ahead of ourselves. We're not making the ads yet, but it kind of shows that this is something, uh, it's, it's directly related to the ads. When you get to the ad, you're going to be able to pick, do I want all products or am I just making this ad for crossbodies? Because maybe the copy is specifically for crossbodies and so on. Um, let's look at the filters again. Let's call one more thing out there. So on these filters here, you don't, you can't choose everything in your feed. There is a set list. So if you want to make product sets, you're not going to be able to just say like, you know, create a custom label in, in your feed and say, well, I guess technically there is something called custom label, but you can't make a custom name like, you know, random underscore name as the field name and it's not going to pop up here. Only these things that it shows you here. So the custom labels, internal label, custom number, zero through four, and then all these price brand availability, all these kind of normal fields. These are the only things you can filter by. So keep that in mind when you're adding custom stuff into your feed or if you're doing anything, you know, specific to your brand or your business, only these things can show up. You can only use those for product sets. I think it's safe to say that our feed's uploaded. So now let's go and uh, yeah, let's make, let's make some ads with the feed. Let's make some ads. Uh, so let's just jump on over. You know, we go here and we go to ads manager, but I'm gonna click it from here because I already opened it. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna, of course, go to create. And we're gonna have to create a campaign and we're gonna click sales because we're what, everybody? Selling things online, that's what we're doing. Um, so click sales and we're gonna continue. Then you are presented with two options. This first option, it's practically yelling at you saying, do this, do this, it's so easy. Um, so there's Advantage Plus shopping campaigns and there's manual campaigns. What's the difference, Pierce, you're asking? I'm going to tell you. Okay, so when you make a manual campaign, you're going to end up making more decisions. The manual campaigns, you have uh, the concept of an ad set here. So there's three levels. There's the campaign, the ad set, and the ad. You might already know, know that, but when you choose manual, you get the ad sets. You can make multiple ad sets. When you, when you do the Advantage Plus shopping campaigns, there's just one ad set, you just dump it all in. Here, you can choose for this campaign to lock it to a catalog. So if you turn it on here, if I say Advantage Plus catalog ads turn on, then I would select a catalog. So that's saying basically for this whole campaign, whenever we're making catalog ads, we're always just exposed from this catalog. I'd recommend not setting it here. If you don't set it here, you can just set it on the ad, um, which is honestly a lot simpler and you can it'll give you more flexibility if you need to change something later let's say you like you have to set up another catalog usually you just have one anyway but you know it's i don't really know why you do it here it just kind of locks you in but if you want to you can the other thing is when you set it here and then we were to go hit next then it's going to ask us to yeah prompt us to select a product set um, at the ad set level so then not only do you have like the whole catalog locked each ad set you make will be locked to a product set from that catalog um, and again, if you don't check these things off, you can just do it at the ad level. I'll go back and I'll uncheck this catalog. I won't lock it. But if we go to the ad setup, then this is where we will select our catalog. Aha, there it is, in the ad setup, right at the top. So at the ad level, we're gonna click Advantage Catalog Ads. And then we get some more options. We can say single image or video. That means basically Meta is going to just pick one product to show somebody, which is kind of, usually people don't do that. You want to have the carousel, um, which is then going to show people a slideshow of products they think they'll like. This is the most popular version. And you see there's a lot of different formats of it. Um, in the feeds, it usually like shows up as a, a big slider like this. But in stories, it will show up sometimes as a, a bunch of different squares, which is not showing us that version here. Down here in Add Sources is where it's going to actually let us choose our catalog. So I've got the Marpipe example catalog selected currently, but if I wanted to change it to a different one, I could. And then you also see your product sets. So you, you can see how, oh, there's a crossbody bag. Is that sweet? You can see how if I didn't set it at the campaign level, the ad set level, I can just set it on the ad level. So that's kind of the basics of just going through and setting up a catalog ad or use the manual campaign. Um, the manual campaign, basically what, what it showed us is that we just have more options. The main thing is we can make multiple ad sets. We can set different audiences for those ad sets. We have a lot more control over what we're doing 
in each little piece. Um, but next, let's look at the Advantage Plus campaign. Let's make a new, create a new campaign, sales because we're selling things online. And let's check out the Advantage Plus campaign. So remember on the other one, we had ad, we had ad sets, we had budgets, audiences, targeting, we had all this scary stuff. On here, when you make an Advantage Plus shopping campaign, it's much, much simpler. You see the website and shop options, and that's basically just saying, you know, when someone clicks the ad, where are they gonna go? That's the same thing we had in manual. Um, we see the audience location, so if you need to make any exclusions, you see the, what is this part? You see the reporting, I don't know what this part is. You, you see the budget and schedule. You see, yeah, and that's it. So there's far less options. This Basically the campaign works as the ad set, and then you just dump ads in it. There's basically like no options, damn near. We're already just here at the, at the ad setup. So we're skipping all those other confusing options and we're just getting right to, okay, let's click catalog ads. We're gonna turn on our catalog. We're gonna choose carousel because that's what we do. Um, and then we're just gonna kind of fill it out. We've got all the same options as the manual, um, but we didn't have to do as much work to get there. It doesn't have to be complicated, you know? Another thing I wanna highlight before we're done here, this is kind of my last thing. Um, I want to highlight the enhancements, what they're calling the enhancements. This is kind of a new thing. Um, it's on the ad level. So we've got a catalog ad. We see our previews over here. Um, but then under somewhere over here, and some of this, one of these parts, yeah, you're going to see Advantage Plus Creative. They have these enhancements. And when you're running catalog ads, and especially in rich catalog ads with MarPipe, where you've actually maybe, you know, you're, you're adding things into the image, you're making actual ads out of the images instead of the plain product images. You want to be conscious of these. So what they can do is if you turn some of these on like dynamic media or adapt a placement or a number of generate backgrounds, info labels, it can actually, a lot of these are on by default and it can add things or change the creative from what you initially saw it look like. Um, even though you're saying, hey, use this image, it can use a different one and it won't even show that in the preview. So that's just something that you want to be aware of. The brand new thing, the enhancements. A lot of people, you know, for certain types of ads, they'll just leave them off entirely. Something to be aware of. I implore you to check out MarPipe if you want to go even deeper on your catalog ads. After you get this set up, if you're like, wow, catalog ads are doing really great for us. They probably will be. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to check out MarPipe. MarPipe gives you complete creative control over your catalog ads letting you build templates, add elements to the to the actual canvas, uh, use multiple different images. There's a lot of cool stuff that MarPipe can do. So check us out, um, and thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps.